Hello and welcome to the Vork. I'm Brian Watrous and this is part 27 of a 10 part video series where we're learning how to automate using Vrealize Orchestrator. In the previous two videos, we saw two workflows, each of which were causing us problems because we were not using configuration attributes. And the same thing's gonna happen in this workflow. Again, one more video with one more workflow to really drive home the point of why these configuration attributes are so useful. So let's jump in. Again, you'll recall our scenario is we're creating a workflow, we're developing it and testing it first in our test dev environment, but then we want to promote that workflow into the production environment, which has a different range of IP addresses. So let's go into the lab environment, where right now we're looking at the previous workflow. But notice that as I switch from the older workflow to our new workflow, that the schema, so here's the old workflow, here's the new workflow, the schema is identical. So the problem that we had with the older workflow was that we were hard coding IP addresses into our workflow schema elements. And we were careful to make certain that we use the right IP addresses that, to hard code into the different branches. But we are, in this second example, we are hard coding attribute values into, actually they're not even attribute values, we're hard coding um, values into our schema elements. And that is really problematic for a whole slew of reasons. But in this new workflow called even better, but still not using configuration elements, we have the same schema. It's got the same two branches, but this time notice that my schema elements do not hard code the IP addresses. Instead, we are using attributes, which are defined over in the general tab. You'll notice that I have six different workflow attributes. Three of them are for production, for holding production environment IP addresses, and the other three are for holding IP addresses for test dev machines. So by doing this in my workflow, instead of hard coding the values into each schema element, I just link to the configure, I link to the workflow attributes. And you guys know how to do linking. There are multiple ways of doing linking. In this, excuse me, I should say binding. In this case here, I'm doing binding using the visual binding tab. So I just go to each scheme element, do binding to bring in the at workflow attribute that I need. And as a result, since all of my values are now stored as workflow attributes, I can define their values once and use the values stored in these workflow attributes throughout all of my schema elements or any of the schema elements I need to, all I need to do is some variable binding. So that's better because I've now, it's for the first time in any of these workflows, I've managed to centralize the, the, the place where I'm setting my attribute values. But we still have a problem here, which is that this technique works fine if you have one workflow or maybe two workflows or maybe three, but what if you had a bunch of workflows, all of which need to know about these IP addresses? I could set up each workflow to have workflow attributes that have the six different values that I need, but if any of those values ever change in the future in my, in my environment, I'm gonna to have to go to each one of these workflows, go to their general tab and change the value of the um, attribute, which is not going to be fun. It's hard to find which workflows have the hard-coded values. Again, they're hard-coded, not as hard-coded values in this case, but hard-coded as attribute values in the workflow. It's, it's just hard to go back and find these things. And even if you do find them all, for me, if I had to change the IP address across these hundred different workflows, I'm, I'm going to make mistakes. So what we're going to do here in the next video is finally start using configuration attributes. And as you'll quickly discover, that's gonna make our life a whole lot easier. So enough of these first three workflows and the problems that they're causing. Join me in the next video, and I promise I'll show you how to use configurations.